So I was chatting recently with a friend of mine, James Matthews, who runs a very successful YouTube channel. And he recently shot a film using the brand new Sony FX6. And the images coming out of it look fantastic. The film's called Sky on Fire. I'll put a link to his channel in my description. But uh, basically got me thinking about an episode that I've been wanting to make for a while, which is basically how I approach a grade and what's going on in my head and uh, I'm basically talking you through the entire grading process. So James very kindly lent me some footage from that film and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. So this is the finished grade that you're looking at. I've rearranged my windows a little bit to just make it a little bit easier. So I've taken the gallery off, I've taken clips off. There's only one clip here that we're working on. I've just cleaned it up so this view can be as big as possible and you can see my node tree as clearly as possible as well. So. Just talking you through the node tree very quickly, we've got a couple of primaries here, which I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna reset all this and start from scratch. So we've got a couple of primaries here. Um, up here, we've got a bit of stuff doing uh, exposure to certain regions in here. Uh, we've got a uh, color warper being used here, uh, a little bit of isolation work using curves here, and a bit of work on the face. And finally, we've got a glow on the end. So let's go ahead and reset all this. If I go up to here to color, Reset, I can delete all the grades and all the nodes, but I'm gonna keep my node structure and just delete all the grades, all the power windows, everything that's in there is now completely reset. And the only other thing I need to do is set the color management back as well. So you can see how I did that. So I'm gonna set that back to regular color management. So we're now looking at the log file. This is the actual camera file straight out of the Sony FX6. So before we start playing around with the nodes, I wanna get this into a decent color space. So originally I would use a color space transform node and I showed you that on my A7S III episode. So if you wanna see how I did it using color space transform, have a look at that. But now we're on Resolve 17, I work in a slightly different way with my color management. So let's change to a Resolve color managed environment. And by default, it comes up with the Rec. 7 and 9, which is what we want to work in. So let's just have a quick look what's going on here. If I lift up the gain here, keep an eye on the waveform, and I'm gonna push that up, and you see that our highlights blow out quite easily there. And the same with the blacks. If I just bring these down, the shadows get crushed without uh, very little pushing. So what I want to do is change the environment I'm working in to be DaVinci Wide Gamut. So let's just reset that. And I'll show you what happens. So if I click in here, and DaVinci Wide Gamut is for SDR and HDR. So even though we're working in SDR, this works really well. So watch what happens if I do the same thing now. If I bring up the gain, you see that my highlights just roll off at the top now. They don't get blown out. And the same with the blacks, you just get a really nice roll off. Obviously you can push it to extreme and you will start crushing it, but it's just a much more controlled way of working. So I'm just gonna reset that. And before I do anything, before I start grading, now that I can see the image a little bit better because we're in a color managed environment, the first thing I need to do is have a look at the actual shot itself. So at the minute we're on the last frame, so this is a seven second shot. And I'm just gonna quickly play it through just to check that the camera doesn't move too drastically. So when I'm creating windows and things like that, I need to know what's happening to the shot. So we've got two push-ins here. Remember this is camera rushes, so I presume James would have just taken one of these in the final edit. And okay, and then he turns his head at the end. Right, so at least I know what's going on with the shot. Always have a look at the shot first. Okay, so my first node here is uh, basically I work with offset first, just get the uh, get the overall image in a good place. So it's not in a bad place at all actually at the minute, but I'm just gonna play around with this dial here and just get it in a good place. Now I've got a panel in front of me, so this is the dial I would move if I was using the software, but I'm actually gonna do this using the panel just because I'm used to working like that. And I'm doing a combination here of looking at the scopes to check that I don't push things too hard and obviously looking at the image to see what's visually pleasing for me. So I reckon somewhere around there. Now let's work on lift, gamma and gain. So again, I'm gonna use the panel, but the dials I'm working with are these three here. So I'm just lifting up gain first. Let's go up a little bit, let's just drop our lift and bring gamma up slightly. Okay, somewhere around there. I'm just gonna add a bit of contrast now as well. So I'm gonna to go to my contrast tool, which is here. And let's just lift that up a little bit. And somewhere around there. Okay, so I'm now gonna move on to the second node. And in here, I'm gonna look at temperature and saturation. So let's just have a look. So put a bit of saturation in first. So that's my saturation tool, which is down here. Just dark, and I don't like to go too much to start with. 
can always pull it back. And then uh, let's just check our color temperature. It looks pretty good actually. And I'm also mindful that I'm setting my basic primaries at this point. I'm not doing any advanced looks at this point. I wanna keep the image as clean as possible to work with. And I'm just gonna switch this node on and off. So what I tend to do is just press Command and D and you can just temporarily take the node on and off to just check that you're going the right way. And let me just do that with the offset as well. And what I can do is check both of them by highlighting them both. Okay, so that's a good start there. So what I want to do now is analyze the image a little bit further. So what's going on here? We've got some sky here, so we can play with that a little bit and bring that out, get it a bit more textured. We're a little bit dark over here, so I might bring that out as well. Uh, a couple of other things that are just jumping out at me. So this map, this sort of luminous green on the map is annoying me a little bit. So we're gonna deal with that in the next few nodes. Okay, so let's move on to our next node. So we've got this one labeled sky. And what I'm gonna do here is have a look at this sky here and just give it a bit more texture. And I think the best way of doing that would be to use the HDR tools. But first thing I'm gonna do is just isolate it. So I'm gonna use a power window and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna draw a power window. Now to do that, I need to just zoom out of this image slightly. So I'm just using my middle mouse and just coming out slightly and I'm just gonna draw around here. So I'm just drawing quite carefully around the edge of the sky here. And we already know that we've got to track this. So let's just check that we can get a track before we start doing any detailed work. So I'm gonna hit the tracker, track in reverse, because obviously I'm at the end of the shot. Okay, that's great. So this shot is actually quite unstable. So I'm probably gonna put a stabilizer on this at the end. So let's go back to the end of our frame. And obviously with any power window, I always add some softness. So just a little bit on here. And let's go to our HDR tools to adjust this. So we've got our shadow light and highlights by default. I'm just gonna switch up to the next range. I've already done a whole episode on HDR tools. So if you're not following quite what I'm doing here, have a look at that episode. I'll put a link above uh, so you can watch that easily. So what I'm gonna do is adjust uh, light level first. I'm just going to my exposure and I'm gonna bring that down. And already you can see the detail coming back in those clouds. Let's push it a little bit further. Let's see how far we can actually push it. So we're getting this nice detail coming in here. Let's just boost our highlights a little bit. And don't forget that we can play around with the zones as well if we need to. So we can go in here and adjust the zones, but we've got plenty of scope in there. And I think we've even got a bit of specular highlight in there. So let me just see. Yeah, there's plenty in there. So let's have a look at that. I'm just gonna adjust the exposure in there. There you go, you can see what's going on now. Let's bring that light down again a little bit more. So I'm gonna deselect these two and let's switch this node on and off. And that is looking much better. Let's just see what a bit of saturation does actually in here. Okay, now it's looking a bit, that's looking a bit false. I'm gonna reset the saturation by double clicking it. That's great, I'm happy with that for now. Okay, so let's move on to our next node. And this is labeled green and what I'm doing here is just, I just wanna make these trees here a little bit more warm, a little bit more earthly, if you like. And I think the nicest tool for that would probably be taking advantage of the new color warper. And I have done an episode on the color warper as well, so I'll put a link to that in the description and uh, I'll put a card above. So all I need to do on the color warper is choose how many zones I want. So I'm gonna go for eight in here and I've got them linked. So it's eight in hue, eight in saturation and I'm gonna work in HSL. And I understand that HSP is the, is the default setting for a reason, but I still prefer to work in HSL. It just works better for me. And so I'm gonna go up to the trees here. I'm gonna sample a green area, and I'm just gonna push it slightly warmer. So I'm pushing it towards the reds, and maybe give it a little bit more saturation. No, actually, that's, it looks a bit false if I put too much saturation, so I'm just literally pushing it towards warmer areas. Let's just take another bit and just check I've got it all. And again, switch the node on and off. It's a really subtle thing. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the screen size back to full screen for you. And that is what's being affected. So all this here is being affected. Okay. And it's actually picking up a little bit in the water here as well, but I don't know that I mind that. I could just put a power window on that if it really bothers me. Uh, it's maybe a little bit too saturated. I'm just gonna go back and let's just do it manually in here. Just pull back that saturation a bit. And on and off again. And that's better. 
So this is really starting to take shape now. This is looking really good. And I'm down to the last few sort of details really. So let's get onto a next node and this is labeled map. And what I noticed straight away with this map is it's the green here is very bright, sort of luminous green. And I think it's slightly distracting. I want to be looking at him really. You want to be, you want to be focusing more on him and maybe the landscape. And that green is just popping out a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to reduce that using a curve. So let's go into the curve tools and I'm going to go straight for hue versus saturation, which is already in. And let's just sample a bit of that green. So it's roughly around there. And what I usually do is expand these out from whatever it chooses itself. And let's just start bringing down the saturation, keeping an eye on that map. And I want a little bit of green in there, but I just don't want it as bright as it was. So somewhere around there, let's just command D again. And that subtle move is a big improvement for me. I love it when a little thing makes a big difference. So just to be safe, I'm going to put a power window around that. So let's go and draw a shape around it. That way we know that we're not desaturating any of the other greens in the shot. And let's do a track on that, obviously. Okay, nice clean track again. I always put a little bit of softness on it, even if it doesn't need it, just to be safe and more force of habit, I think. And uh, that's done. So let's uh, switch that on and off. Looking good. Okay, let's move on to the next node. So this technique I've used before on my A7S3 video, but it's going to work really well on this shot. So let's just go through the shot. And when we get to the end, as he turns around, you see there his face is quite sunburnt. So it looks quite red and it's got quite a sort of hard line on it. So what I want to do is reduce that if I can. So what we're going to do is take a qualifier first. So I'm going to go to here and we're going to qualify using HSL and just grab his skin tone there. Let's put our highlight on so we can see what we've actually qualified. And we're going to play around with these now to try and get as best as we can on his face. So first thing I'm going to do is bring the width of this down. I tend to start at the hue and I tend to push and push and push till it breaks and then come back in. So that's gone too far. I'm going to adjust the center point back over and that's really clean there. Let's see if we can tighten the width up a little bit. So the tighter we can get that, the better we're going to be. Let's have a look at our saturation. So if we go saturation low, there you go, that gets it right in now. I'm not worried about all this stuff because I can mask that out really easily. Let's bring our high. Okay, so that's again, it's broken there. So we're, we're keying onto his face now. So let's bring that back again. And let's have a look at what's happening with the luminance. Okay, so we'll just try the luminance high. Around about there. And I'm just gonna check our center point again is good. Okay, so something around there is about as good as I'm going to get it, I think, for now. So I'm going to try a little bit of denoise. And I'm also going to clean up blacks and clean up whites. I don't push these too far, if possible. And a little bit of blur on there. And let me just double check that we've got the best we can. That's even better there. Just tweak that center point again, just check. And that is fine for what we need to do. So I'm going to take the highlight off. And I'm just going to draw a shape around him. Actually, let's see how much of the body is actually included. We might just get away with that, to be honest. I think I can just put a loose shape around that. So let's just go here. I oh, know, let's do it properly. So I'm just going to isolate his head. Let's track it backwards. Okay, and then we need to go back to our M position so I can see his head turned around. Uh, as usual, bit of softness on the window. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my open effects and I'm going to add a color compressor. Now I've got this set to my favorites at the minute, so usually you'd see it like this, but if you just press the little star at the side, you can add it to your favorites box. And then I'm going to choose in here a color compressor. So I'm going to drag and drop that on. Now because we've done a qualification on his face, the color compressor is only going to affect that region. And we also put the window on it to make sure that it didn't pick up the few little bits and the outside that the highlight picked up. Now, to get this, his red face here to match the his natural skin tone, I'm gonna to take this tool here, the little, um, the little color picker, and I'm just gonna sample maybe that area of his back there. And that's giving us a new target color. And what I'm gonna do now is compress hue, saturation, and luminance. I don't tend to touch luminance. It starts to look a little bit weird, but let's just bring hue down. And you should see, let me zoom in for you. So you can see this better. If I now go extreme with that, you see that we're just adjusting the color of his face. So I'm going to bring the hue down a little bit, somewhere around there. 
I'm going to globally blend this back in a minute, so I don't mind going a bit too far. And then I'm going to compress the saturation as well. And then always just put a little bit of blend back in just to keep it looking natural. So if I now switch that on and off with Command D, that's before and after. So again, it's one of those little tiny differences that make a big difference to me. So let's put that back to best fit. I could have done that with Shift Z. And let's just play that through, just check that it's not picking up anything else. And there we go. So that is good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna press Shift D to actually bypass all the grades we've done so far. So that was us in Color Manage. So this is bringing the uh, Resolve Color Management into Rec. 709 Color Space using DaVinci Wide Gamut. And it's recognized that this clip is set to uh, Sony S-Log3 uh, Cine Gamma. So I'm gonna show you that. If I bring the clips back, and if I right hand click on this clip, you can check using the input color space. And if I come down here, you'll see that it's set to Sony Gamut 3, Cine S-Log3, which is correct. Let's take the clips back off again, just to give you a bit more space. And Shift D puts the grade back on. So it's looking really good. Okay, so going on to the next node now, this is an exposure one. So what I want to do here is, I'm just gonna get rid of the open effects there, just so you can see the node tree clearer. I want to just adjust this bit of beach here. It goes a little, it's sort of lighter here, and it's a little bit darker here and here. It could kind of work as a vignette, but I want to see what it looks like a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can draw a shape again. Let's go to my pen tool. I'm just going to draw a shape round from here. I'm just being quite loose with this. I work with lots of shapes, so I'm always just sort of controlling light. So I'm, I, yeah, I make my own light using power windows. Again, tons of softness. Now, when you're doing this sort of effect, when you are literally adjusting light, you want plenty of softness. Uh, even more than that normally. And I'm gonna just adjust my offset. So go back to one of my primaries and let's just lift that up a little bit. And that to me is looking better. So again, this is you know personal taste, but if I switch that on and off, then I'm preferring that. Now, if I just click here, I can actually get rid of that power window as well. So we can see it a little bit clearer and that's looking good. And the next node, is doing a very similar thing, but I'm just highlighting this area here. So again, I'm gonna grab a new power window, but this might need a different level. That's why I've done it on two nodes. I could have done these two windows on one single node and used opacity to adjust the intensity, but I prefer to just put it on two separate nodes. It's easy enough to do. So again, let's have a look at our offset. That's a bit too much. Oh, and it's also not got any softness on it. Again, tons and tons of softness. And you might even want to track these, but, but if you've got a lot of softness on, often you'll get away with it. Just check that's looking better. I might bring it down just a little bit more. So again, let's just take the window off and then Command D. And then let's do a Shift D, just check the overall image is looking good. And it's always wise just to play a little bit of the shot as well. So that is, there is quite a lot of movement in that. So do you know what I'm gonna do? I am actually gonna track these two. So I'm gonna go to my tracker and just track that. It tracks so quick, I might as well. And I'm gonna to go to this one as well. I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna track it. Okay, yeah, that actually had quite a lot of movement in there. But again, I've got a big softness, so it's really gonna be unnoticeable. And then my final node is just a bit of subtle glow, just to give it a, a little bit of a pop. So into my open effects, and I've got glow in my favorites. I'm just gonna drag and drop it on. And good thing to do with glow is to change the composite mode. And what I always do is blend it back. So if we go to, let's go to soft light, you see that obviously darkens the image straight away. So you need to go to your threshold up here and bring that back. Now I put it back to full, and then I'm gonna use the blend tool here to decide how much I want. Now that is obviously quite extreme there, but watch what happens when I move this blend. So this is completely without, and this is with. So we are slightly changing exposure here as well. So once I've added this glow, I might just check my exposure. And what else I want to do with this is isolate it to just this part of the image. So again, let's grab a power window and let's just isolate that really loosely around here. Okay, and if you want to adjust your shape, you can do so. I can just bring that down like this. Actually, let's let's take all that. Let's keep all that in. And if you press Shift, you can multiple select 
these so you can move more than one at a time. Uh, let's add tons of softness on the inside. I might have to move this whole window over a little bit. I don't want the glow to go into the clouds. So let's just switch that on and off. Okay, let's get rid of the power window. And let's just see that on the move and see if I need to add a track. No, I don't think I do, but I think the glow is still a little bit too strong. So I'm going to blend it back even more. So I've blended that back. It's only at 0.2, so it's really subtle on and off. And I now decide if I want to adjust my exposure or not. And so if I do want to do that, it's easy enough just to add another node, or I could go back to the original nodes where I set my exposure, but I'm quite happy where it is. So that is the first time that I've graded Sony FX6 footage. This was a 4K shot and it graded really easily and nicely. It behaved how I wanted it to. The DaVinci Resolve color management tools behaved as I wanted them to. And I think we've got a really pleasing result there. So uh, James must be really pleased with the footage he got out of that camera. So I hope you enjoyed that little insight into what goes on in my head and uh, how I approach a grade. Thank you again to James Matthews for the footage. It looks great. I'm really impressed with what's coming out of that FX6. Hit the subscription button and the notification bell for me if you haven't already. That would be great. And I will see you in the next episode.